Okay, we're going to talk about bitterness. Now you're probably thinking, oh, great. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> it's a very important subject, and it can be a bothersome subject. Most of you have probably heard many teachings on bitterness before. I hope that tonight I'll bring some new things to the table that maybe you haven't heard before. See, bitterness is responsible for more diseases and disorders and troubles and blockages in our lives than we can ever imagine. And it's far more than us being able to, you know, forgive or not forgive people in our lives that may have hurt us 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. A lot of bitterness that we're dealing with right now is ancient. It's actually a generational iniquity that we're dealing with, and that's why we are having such a difficult time getting the breakthrough in this area because it goes back very far in our bloodline, and there are ancient, very powerful demonic forces attached to it that can be causing major issues in your life, okay? So we need to learn about these things so that we can have the total victory over them. Now, bitterness is more than just getting mad at something or someone, the dictionary describes it as being characterized by intense antagonism and hostility. Not just hatred, but like bitter hatred. It's when a relationship goes so bad that it's become so mentally, emotionally, and maybe even physically abusive that you're letting your feelings of frustration, hurt, or rejection turn into anger, intense anger, intense resentment, and in fact, bitterness. When it becomes overwhelming and consuming something that's happened in your life or relationship that's happened in your life, and it becomes so consuming that it takes up mind time, it controls emotions, it controls your will. I mean, when you see bitterness entering into relationships, that's when you see marriages ending. That's when you see churches breaking up. That's when you see lifelong friendships dissolving. That's what happens when bitterness overtakes people. Bitterness is also defined in the dictionary as something hard to bear or grievous, distressful. Those are the times when you've gone through a situation, a traumatic event, a circumstance that was so painful that it finally developed in you becoming very bitter about it. Maybe it started with you got fired from your job or you lost your job. And then pretty soon you start losing possessions. You maybe lose your car, maybe even lose your house, maybe even lose your children. And you develop bitter anger, bitter hatred towards your boss, towards the whole situation until that finally consumes you. There's been a lot of trouble that we've all lived through. Is it true? How many of you lived through events that have been extremely trying to you where you actually thought you were going to be overwhelmed and consumed by them? We have to watch out because in the middle of those painful events, sometimes we can develop a bitter attitude towards them. And you're going to see in these sessions that when that happens, bitterness can allow all kinds of diseases, disorders, mental, emotional, and physical problems to happen to you. Amen? So we have to ride that fine line because those events are painful. They're unfair. They're unjust. It's like a, a child dies, a loved one passes on, something extreme happens to you that you didn't even do to yourself. Circumstances around you. And you're thinking, this isn't right. This isn't fair. You might even get bitter at God. You'd be like, you could change it right now. You could do something about it. Why aren't you? And you allow bitterness to spring up inside of you because of this seemingly unfair, probably unfair thing that has happened to you. You have to understand, no matter what happens to us, we are responsible for not allowing ourselves to become bitter. Because when we do, guess who it hurts? Right. It hurts us. It doesn't hurt anyone else. Amen? Do you understand? Bitterness lives in your soul. If you're born again, the Spirit of Christ lives in your spirit, man, and no bitterness can live in Christ. Amen? He's Christ in you, the hope of glory, and he's perfect. So bitterness does not live in the spirit realm. It lives in the soul realm. That means that you have been wounded by the sin of bitterness. It lives in the soul, or it got passed down to you through your family line, and then it starts controlling every part of your soul. If you've got a bitter root in the soul, man... It'll start controlling the way you think. It'll start controlling your will, the choices you make, and it'll start controlling your emotions. 
You can always tell when you've let a situation or a relationship turn sour and lead up to bitterness because you'll notice that there's a change in your mind. When you think about that person or about that situation, your mind constantly revolves around it. It's thinking these judgmental, angry, resentful thoughts. Maybe if it's about a person and you kind of rehearse over and over again in your mind how the next time you see them, you're going to tell them off. You're going to tell them exactly how wrong they are and how right you are. You know what I mean? How many of you ever had that? That's when something has morphed and graduated into bitterness. Amen? It's the same thing with emotions. Bitterness lives in the soul, so it can control your emotions. You ever have somebody walk in and mention that person's name, and right away you go, (gasps) and you just want to freak out when they say their name, right? You want to spit. You want to get angry. You might even get enraged. You might get tearful. Your voice raises up, and you start talking like this. I don't want to talk about that person. Why did you even bring their name up? Did you know what they did? And then you start going through the list. Is that true? You go through the list. That's right. That's when you know things have gotten bitter. Who suffers when you get bitter? Right. Bitterness even can control your will. It lives in the soul, and it can control the decisions you make. I'll just give you a simple example. I've seen lots of people, and I'm not necessarily saying this is the case every single time, but lots of people quit really good jobs because they let themselves get bitter. They got bitter at how they were being treated by their boss. They got bitter because maybe they weren't making the money they thought they should make. They got bitter because they weren't in the position they thought they deserved to be in. Right? They start to develop bitterness, bitterness against their fellow coworkers. And so what happens is, is they go into prayer, right? Oh, God, do you think I should quit this job? And they hear aloud, yes. <laughs> and they go in and say, good, God said I could quit. I give my two-week notice. See you later. Take this job and... Oops. And then they quit, and then what happens? Then they can't get another job. And pretty soon, they're going downhill. And then they can't pay the rent. Then they're calling their folks for money. And then their folks run out of money in a couple months. And then on and on and on it goes. But they've heard from God. God told them to quit that job. You know what? I can venture out to say that 90% of the time it wasn't God that said, yes, quit. It was the wound in their soul that came from being bitter. Let me warn you right now. If you're ever in a tumultuous situation, never make a life-changing decision during that time. People make the biggest life-changing decisions in the middle of a debacle. In the middle of a tumultuous event, when they've allowed themselves to get emotional and bitter, and they make decisions at that time, and what they're hearing in their mind that they think is the Lord is really a wound in their soul that came from the sin of bitterness. Do you understand? Because that's what bitterness does. It can wound your soul. The Bible talks about our souls being able to be wounded by sins when we sin, when people sin against us. When our ancestors sin, talks about our souls being able to be wounded when we live through traumatic events. So all these things, trauma, circumstances, people, every day there's a possibility and an opportunity for us to get bitter or not. You know, I found out as I was going through healing that I was not just bitter about things that had happened in my daily life or things in the past. But I was being controlled by a root of bitterness that lived inside of me that was ancient. That was actually a generational iniquity. Let me explain that to you. The Bible uses a lot of words to describe sin like rebellion, trespass, iniquity. When it talks about iniquity, you know what it means? It's referring to generational sin. How many of you have ever had like the propensity to react bitterly? Or angrily to a situation when it, when it arises. Like when something comes up, you go, oh, man, do you believe it? That happened again? Oh, what's going to happen next? Huh? How many of you feel like that when stuff happens? Or a person keeps on doing something to you and you're like, I knew it. Oh, I knew they would do it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I could have bet money and made a million on that. Yeah. How many of you do that automatically as your natural response? Come on, raise your hand. Let's see it. When you do that, it could be because you have a literal bent in your character towards bitterness. Do you understand that? That that's your natural response. I want my, na- I don't know about you, but I want my natural response to be, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> when I do that, you know, at least in the past when I've done it, I had to really make myself do that. Oh, praise the l- Lord. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've had to make myself be like that. I just want to naturally respond like that where we just gush out of me. Oh, praise the Lord. That's awesome. God's going to do something great. That's how I want to be. I want to get to the point where I have so no bitterness in me that it's not controlling my character at all that it would just naturally gush out of me some really awesome Christ-like sounding stuff. Amen? 